Hi, Phoenix Rising here, and today we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head comparison between the Sightmark Wraith HD brand new digital night vision scope by Sightmark and its uh, slightly older big brother, the Sightmark Photon RT. So both of these are digital night vision scopes. Uh, they both can be used during the daytime. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and go over the features of each of these and then we'll go out and do some side-by-side -side nighttime comparisons. Uh, so we'll get the photon out of the way and we will talk about the Wraith first, okay? Uh, this is an HD rifle scope. It uses a SEMO sensor up front, 1920 by 1080 with a 1280 by 720 display in the back. So you have really good detail uh, as far as digital night vision goes from this thing. Uh, they're calling it an HD 4x32, which is a bit of a misnomer. Your front lens is not 32 millimeters, that's a 50 millimeter lens up front. And where they're getting the 4x32 from is the fact that it's 4x optical resolution uh, on it, op optical magnification, and an 8x digital zoom, which gets you up to potentially 32x zoom, okay? Uh, anybody who's played much with digital zooms can tell you that that's not uh, that's not exactly the cat's meow, and that's true with this scope as well. Okay, uh, to focus in the front here, you have a ring. You do need two fingers on it. Very stiff, stiffer than I would like to see it. Uh, I'd also like to see bigger lugs to, for a better tactile feedback on your front focus, rear focus back here. So once you get this puppy focused in. Uh, We'll just talk about in use real quick here. Uh, your menus, press the button if you to get to your main menu. That's where all your profile saves, which it has five of. Okay, and you can individually name them, which is a big plus if you're gonna if you're gonna zero this thing on five different rifles. Yeah, give us the ability to name your profiles so that you can remember which ones which. And they did. Uh, up and down are your digital zoom. Your right arrow starts and stops recording, and your left arrow changes between daytime, color daytime view mode, black and white nighttime, and your green night vision nighttime mode, which uh, I will tell you, I think that's a gimmick too. It just makes everything green. It doesn't just highlight, it, it makes your blacks green, okay? I'll put it to you that way. It just washes everything over in green, and it's not very usable. That's a gimmick, as is the 8X zoom. Uh, practical uh, practical use, I would say maybe 4 or 5x digital zoom tops during daytime use and uh, and 2 or 3x digital zoom in nighttime use uh, with any kind of usability. So a lot of gimmickry and uh, some special things that sound really great that aren't. But uh, that being said, let's, let's talk about detail. This has a very good detailed view on it. And... Uh, Runs on four AA batteries that will give you about four and a half hours of runtime. Uh, if you don't like this mount, there's a quick disconnect mount you can buy optional from Sightmark. And uh, what else? Batteries. I'm going to take this off real quick. Let's see how fast we could change batteries on this thing, okay? Because you're going to be changing them if you're playing with this at night. Okay, covers off. Flip it out. Oh, got one stuck. I'll leave that one in there. Let's uh, put our brand new batteries in. And remember, you're doing this in the dark if you're out there hunting at night. Uh, let me feel for the notch. That's got to go up forward on it. Put this back in. And let's screw this down so we don't get no water inside of our scope. And, okay, I'm ready. I just wanted to show you that. There's a reason I'm showing you that, and you'll see in a minute. Okay, uh, what else to talk about on this? comes with an illuminator. 2CR123 battery powered. I don't have it because it failed when I first got it in, turned on once, and then the switch went out. So it's on its way to site mark for them to come and give me, or for them to mail me back either that one repaired or a brand new one. So, uh, but it looks pretty capable when I turned it on and just kind of very quickly played with it. Uh, it did seem like it's going to be a decent illuminator to, to light this thing up out to 200 yards. I've got your side cover off here. I wanted to show you micro USB port and one thing I do like micro SD card for saving your videos and pictures in because every scope that I've had to plug in the USB cable to my computer has been dreadfully painfully slow and stinks including the photon. It's just really slow to download. 
Uh, thank you for giving me the slot for a card, although you don't give me one with it, so you've got to buy your own card. And by the way, don't buy the super high-end micro SD card. This is a class six card in here, and it records just fine. You don't need to buy the super extreme something something for thirty dollars. Any reasonable card will work, okay? So that's pretty much it for the quick once over. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll uh, pause this and then we'll take a look at the photon and then go in the field. Okay, we've talked about the Wraith. Now let's talk about the Sightmark Photon RT. Okay, this is the Photon RT. It's a little bit older model. This is the 4.5X model with uh, 42 millimeter objective lens in the front, a little bit smaller lens with a pinhole for daytime use. Now we're going to go front to back on this and try and keep it short. Uh, we'll start off with your focus ring. As you can tell it's way up front here. Might be a bit of a pain in the butt if you're trying to do it with your right hand while mounted on a rifle. It does move freely and has really good lugs to be able to get a good tactile feedback while you're focusing. But uh, initially I didn't like it, but I will say it grows on you. And the reason for that is when you're mounted like on an AR-15, this thing does extend onto your foregrip a good bit. And I'll try and include some pictures uh, after we get done with this section of the review. But basically you can reach up around your foregrip and you can use your thumb to manipulate, if I got that too far out of view there, to manipulate your uh, focus ring. So it's actually a lot more usable than it seems even for this arm length scope, okay? So there you have it, flip up lens cap that won't get lost. Uh, infrared illuminator, very high quality infrared illuminator. This thing will work out to two to 300 yards, focusable for throwing a beam, okay? And you can loosen up this, uh, this uh, heat sink. Uh, if you actually loosen it, you can adjust your lens to focus the beam to your particular scope. And I just moved it and probably threw it off, but anyway. Uh, once you lock it down, that's a one-time adjustment, unless you did what I just did. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's a nice touch on the illuminator. Going back to your controls, record button. Uh, this cycles through recording modes and starts and stops video recording or taking a picture when you're out in the field. Your only other real controls, of course, power button. Uh, press hold slightly to power it on. Press hold, it'll do a countdown like the race to turn off power. But one thing that's nice is you can hold this for about a second when the unit's powered up and it'll shut off the display while leaving the scope powered up. So if you're out in the field and you need to change positions or just want to take the scope down from your eye, uh, you can actually turn off the display, save a little bit of battery power in the process, and, uh, and then just touch the button and it's bang, it's right back on instantly, more like traditional night vision, not like the start it up and let it boot up sort of deal. So that's your power button. Your rest of your menus and functions are all accessed through this knob, which is a push button switch with a rotating feature to it. Uh, I like this thing actually. At first I wasn't too impressed, but it grew on me, okay? Uh, when you're out there to power the scope up, you're in, using it without doing anything. If you just rotate the knob, it will adjust your screen brightness, which is a handy feature to have right there without having to dig into nothing, okay? Uh, next you have a quick menu. Just tap the top and it pops up icons on the upper right of your screen. First one is brightness, which is redundant, sight mark. You didn't need that one. But uh, press it again, goes to your IR illuminator, which does have 10 levels of brightness and which you generally don't need to run at the brightest setting, okay? Uh, for 100 yards, one or two on this thing is normally adequate. Press it one more time and you can rotate to turn on and off your 2X digital zoom. And if you leave it be for a second or two, it just disappears and but it's really easy to get to those three functions, screen brightness, IR illuminator, and your digital zoom. Now, if you need to dig into the main menus, uh, press and hold this for two or three seconds, and a menu will pop up on the side. That's where you get your six reticles, your four colors, your zeroing, all that other stuff. And as you go into that menu, it does come out onto the screen, but you can still see through the scope. You can't do, the, do that on the right thing. I don't like their menu where you go, where you're in the menu and you can't see anything else. This is a much less obtrusive menu system. And the one thing it is lacking that I wish it wasn't is saving different profiles. You don't have but one. 
So you set it up, zero it, and that's the way she is. There's no five profiles on this thing. So unless I've missed some way to change or set them, but I believe it's just one scope, okay? Uh, let's carry on while we're talking about uh, the midsection here. Here's your battery compartment. This is great, okay? You want to change batteries? Flip this lever 90 degrees, pull this module out. You, they give you a spare one with a cloth bag. Drop your new one back in, push it down, close it, and your batteries are changed. Changing batteries does not get any easier or better than this rig, okay? I love it. That's great. Uh, out of every piece of night vision I have, this is by far the easiest to change batteries in. Okay, rings. It takes 30 millimeter rings. You have to provide them. Uh, use high mounts. I put medium mounts on it and on an AR-15 with a Magpul 4 grip. All this was maybe one or two millimeters off it. Your cheek weld had to be very, very low and uncomfortable to get access to look through the scope. So high mount rings and you've got about 2.6 inches of space between these. So if you're going to mount this on a bolt gun or some other weapon, uh, you may want to really look at your options because it can you might have a hard time getting it set up. So there you have it. That's the Sightmark Photon RT. Uh, now let's go outside and do some comparisons between this and the Wraith and see how they fare in the real world. Okay, as I would mentioned, I did want to show you some images of the, both of these mounted on a rifle and AR-15 in this case. So uh, looking at the Wraith, you can see it's uh, more compact, definitely looks a little cleaner on the rifle. But also notice that your focusing ring is not in a real good spot for you to mess with when you're actually holding it. So uh, that, that, that's going to be a little bit more difficult than your Photon, where as you can see here, uh, does extend up the, the uh, front hand grip a good bit, but, uh, but by the same token, with the way the ring is, with the large lugs easy to get to, it's a lot easier to focus than, uh, than, what, the, than what it uh, first appears when you're just holding it and looking at it. So anyway, uh, there you go. There's uh, just to give you an idea how these things are going to look on your rifle. Dusk aways. It's going to be a full moon night tonight. We've got the Photon RT and the Sightmark Wraith. Uh, both of them have Nikon 1s behind them. And so we're doing our comparison here. Now right now I've got the Wraith in nighttime mode, black and white nighttime mode. I've got the Photon in the only mode it has, which is uh, black and white nighttime mode. Now uh, we'll go ahead it's getting darker by the minute, but let's go ahead and go to the day view on the Wraith. And even in daytime mode, it actually looks brighter on the screen than what it does to the naked eye. So to do a comparison, let's flip our lens cap down on our Photon RT. So now you're looking through a pinhole on the Photon. I mean, we're talking, you know, 16th inch diameter holes, all the light that's getting into this thing. And here we are at dusk. And here's our image quality. So, uh, not bad at all now. Interestingly, uh, in daytime mode, the even though the Wraith is a 4X and the Photon's a 4.5X, the Wraith looks like it's got higher magnification. And part of that is I think the uh, Photon has a 22 degree field of view and the Wraith has an 18 degree field of view. So narrow field of view, you're going to have a, things are going to look bigger in the viewfinder. So this would be uh, both, both, like I said, both of them in their daytime equivalent. Uh, one thing about the Photon RT is when you do have the pinhole down, you don't have to focus uh, where you still have to focus on the Wraith. And that's because pinhole cameras just naturally, they are what they are. The, the Messing with the focus adjustment doesn't do anything to your image quality, which makes it a little easier to use the Photon in these uh, twilight conditions. Let's see if I can focus in on this uh, wraith a little bit. Okay, there we go. So there's our uh, both units at dusk in day in what would be the equivalent daytime modes. Now let's go ahead and zoom in 
uh, to just 2x because that's a fair comparison BC because the uh, because the photon uh, only has 2x digital zoom so uh, there they are both at 2x at 100 yards and again that's lens cap down so I can actually find focus the wraith but not the photon so I'll flip the lens cap up and let's see if we can do better Okay, so I don't think I don't know if I'm focused good that good or not. Okay, let's uh, take our zooms back out, and that's one thing the race does have make it a little easier to change zoom. Is, is you see the air, little arrow at the very can kind of make it out at the top. That's your quick menu on the photon. Uh, as you press it, it comes up with your IR illuminator, goes to your digital zoom and your brightness. Uh, so that's how you have to adjust your zoom where your up and down buttons are full front towards your lens and back towards you buttons on the Wraith are your digital zoom there. Now conversely, your screen brightness, if you want to adjust, want to adjust that on the Wraith, you're going to have to dig into the menus, which are kind of painful, okay? Uh, whereas a photon, I'll show you, I'm just rotating the knob on top. I don't even have to go into the quick menu to actually change the uh, screen brightness. So uh, there's a difference there. Now one last thing I want to show you is remember we looked at our wobble effect. I'm going to keep going back and forth here and you can see your uh, how things get really snaky on the Wraith as you pan fastly. Uh, as I'm switching back and forth, notice the photon. I mean, there is no lag, there's no, virtually no wobble to the image, uh, so the photon is going to be better if you have to track something kind of rapidly across the screen. It uh, gives you a better view. So, okay, there we are. There's our dusk setting. Let's shut these down, wait a little while, and we'll come back when it's a little darker. Okay, we're back and the moon is about a third of the way up in the sky. Uh, no, no residual light from anything else right now and we have our 850 illuminator aftermarket uh, on low looking at 100 yards. Uh, as you can see we've got a lot of good detail on the Wraith HD. Uh, Photon is the same, is a little bit lower resolution, lower detail but uh, plenty of light there. Now what I want to do here is we'll show you the Wraith versus the Photon without any extra illumination on a Mar on a full moon night. <coughs> okay, there you have it. Uh, photon is somewhat usable at 100 yards. Uh, if we had the moon straight up above or to our backs instead of still on the uh, back side of the hill, uh, I would say we would have absolutely no, no problem uh, seeing anything. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this. Let's just pan around uh, to where we are looking with the moon uh, and if, with the moon uh, at our backs. So when I'm looking a couple hundred yards away there uh, and I got my vehicle parked there so uh, now that's the optimal uh, with the with good moonlight, so right now on a moonlit night you don't need an illuminator with the photon uh, wraith. You definitely will. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the illuminator back on, and that's on low, medium, and high. So uh, as you can see, the wraith definitely has better detail, more usable, and if you're willing to. If you're willing to use an illuminator, if you want to try rolling without it, then uh, the photon would be a better choice for you. So, low illumination at 100 yards, no illumination. Uh, 
again low, medium, and high. Let's pan across to 200 yards with high uh, 850 illuminator on high, good for both. We go to low and the Wraith really doesn't have enough light to uh, function. So let's go to medium at 200. And at 200 with medium, it'll work. And going to 300, not bad, but let's go ahead and go to high. So really, uh, the way to look at the Wraith is even on a full moon night, you're going to need uh, an 850 illuminator. After, and I'm using an Involva T38 right now. Uh, like I said, uh, I believe I mentioned earlier, the included illuminator is probably just about as good but mine had the tail switch go out right, I mean it turned on once and that was about it. So I shipped it off, I'm waiting for it to come back. So I'm using an Evolva T38 aftermarket illuminator. And uh, what I'm finding is that for the Wraith you're going to need to use the, uh, an illuminator on low for 100, medium for 200, and high for 300. Oops, turn it on and off the wrong one. And for the photon, on a full moon at night, if the moon's uh, favorable and you're not in the shadows, uh, you're usable at 100 yards easily. And uh, I'm cycling through. But low illumination will get you out to 200 yards on the photon and medium illumination and high really don't do anything more or less for you on the photon. Uh, we're at 300 yards. Uh, yeah, you'll want to probably use medium or high. So uh, there you have it. There's a comparison. Wraith HD versus Photon RT. Uh, one last thing I will do here is show you the green night vision mode of the Wraith. You have to pardon all the freaking stripes. That's the uh, differences again between the camera and the back screen. Uh, I'm looking at it and to me it just makes shit green. It doesn't give you a night vision or a higher contrast or anything beneficial. So uh, I don't really consider the green night vision mode to be beneficial in any way on the Wraith. And uh, while we're sitting here we'll go ahead and bump up our digital zoom. And again, that's 3x right there. Uh, it's pretty grainy, so let me go ahead and see if I can focus. And uh, Okay, so that's 3x digital zoom, and that's maybe marginally usable. Let's go ahead, 4, 5. So yeah, that's... That's the uh, max zoom, nothing usable there. Uh, to me, the 4x, maybe again, 2x, possibly 3 would be usable. So, uh, daytime mode up to 5x. So, uh, looking at that, yeah, it's not a, the, the, the digital zoom going as high as it is is a gimmick, and the uh, night vision green to me is a gimmick. So, that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this video and uh, we'll have some more coming at you as I get the chance to do them. Okay, here we have it. Uh, getting ready to do our final round with the photon and the race. Uh, moon's about 30, about a third of the way up. Again, same conditions as we had earlier in the test. We have no illuminators on. There's the photon and the wraith. I'm sure I'll bounce back and forth. I'm kind of swapping these videos as I'm going to produce them. So let's go ahead and turn on our 850 illuminator. And there you have the 850 illuminator on as you can see. Uh, even with the, on a full moon night, illuminator helps the photon not necessary in a lot of depending on the circumstances 
uh, race, you absolutely going to need an illuminator pretty much no matter what, even on a bright moonlit night. <coughs> so let's go ahead and what we'll do is brighten up our illuminator. And as you can see, on both units, they really don't need the illuminator being anything but on low at 100 yards. So let's pan out to 200 yards. And again, uh, illuminator's on low. I'm not going to bother focusing. Uh, we'll just look to see how they uh, gather light here. So illuminator's on low at 200 yards. You still have a usable image on the photon. Wraith, you're you really kind of dimming out a good bit. So let's go ahead and go to illuminator on medium. Uh, again, of course, good on the photon. Wraith now has decent illumination of 200 yards. We go out to 300 yards, and photon looks good. And the Wraith is still a little bit lacking, so let's go on high on the illuminator. Uh, of course, photon's good. Now we have uh, good illumination on the Wraith. So you can see uh, the Wraith definitely needs more illumination. It does have a much more detailed image at the different distances. But uh, good picture quality. It's just you're going to have to have an illuminator. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off our standard 850. And again, at 300 yards, uh, look at that difference. Still have uh, still fairly usable on the photon. Not so much so on the right now.